Hey, it's Mike here, and today I wanna to respond to the notion that it isn't worth going vegan if you live in the US because livestock emissions in the US are so small. Now we have keto blog posts and carnivore graphics saying that the amount of emissions are so low that you should actually feel fine eating more animal products, more meat and more beef. And in the case of livestock only being four and a half percent of emissions, they're actually rightfully pointing to our EPA's estimations for livestock in terms of total US emissions. But is the EPA actually right here? They're completely out of line with the rest of the emissions for the world. So using data that is widely accepted, not data by vegans, I've decided to do a little bit of an audit of these EPA figures to see how they actually stack up. And then at the end, we're gonna check just how much carbon we could sequester or capture using land that would be freed up in a vegan model. All right, it's gonna be a lot of data, a lot of math, but I'm gonna use some simple visualization, so let's go. You may have heard global numbers on livestock emissions from the FAO, which range from 14 and a half to to 18% of all emissions, very comparable or greater than all transportation combined. So how does the US only end up at four and a half percent, according to the EPA? At first glance, one might be like, this is believable because A, we buy so much more, we drive so much more, we have a massive military, but the reality is we also eat way more meat and way more animal products than the average person in the world. It appears that because the EPA has historically simply focused on industry, you know, electricity, electricity production and so forth, that it has massively underestimated these animal product emissions. So we're gonna math it up. We're gonna look directly at the carbon footprint of each of the main animal products that are consumed in the US, and we're gonna multiply that by how much we produce as a nation to get a figure, and a little bit of a hint, uh, yeah, it's way higher than the EPA. The EPA is dead wrong. To start off, I wanna work within a little bit of a range. The bottom of the range is just gonna be directly using the environmental working group's figures on greenhouse gas emissions by animal product per weight. As you can see by this chart, and this is US and EU data that it was made from, so this is Western farming practices and should apply to the US. However, the FAO says that the emissions per pound of beef is much higher, and so I'm gonna use their beef estimate as the high range, we're just gonna change beef for the high range and leave the rest as it is. Starting with the environmental working group numbers only, the low end, I went through and got the production amount for every individual animal product here and then multiplied it by the CO2 per pound of that product. And here are the results in boring spreadsheet form, but thankfully, we have some visuals too. The top bar shows the total production in billions of pounds for each animal product. And side note, total production for milk is actually 215 billion pounds a year, but I subtracted the fraction that is turned into cheese to make sure that it isn't double counted. And then we have the right column. It's just the environmental working group chart in pounds, but in a different order because the next column is that multiplied by that US total production, which gives us Again, billions of pounds of CO2 equivalent per year by animal product. Very interesting, beef of course wins. If you make milk and cheese one category, it's the second biggest behind beef at 460-ish. Chicken and pig are up there, but one that is actually growing quickly is farmed fish. We'll probably see that grow in the future. And these visuals were made on Tableau by some very nice people named Mitchell and Alexis, so thank you. Okay, now let's get some percentage answers. According to the EPA, our total US emissions are 6,400 million metric tons. So we need to convert those pounds to metric tons. And here's the result totaling those all together. We are at 945 million metric tons for animal products, already pushing 14.75% of total current US emissions. So our low end is already over three times higher than the EPA's figure. It's just, just kind of interesting. And then we can go and add that higher end for the FAO beef figure, which brings us from 27 pounds of CO2 equivalent per pound up to 67. And then we have a total of about 1400 million metric tons, which brings us to 22.3% of current total emissions. But let's get the percentages right because that increase would actually bring us to a new total of around 7,000 million metric tons. So our new percentage would be a range from 13.5 to 20% of total emissions from livestock in the US. This is actually very similar to the FAO's range of 14.5 to 18%. It's right there. It absolutely is worth it to ditch animal products regardless of which country you're in for the environment. These animal product emissions alone are so high that they are directly comparable to all the fossil fuel emissions of countries like 
Russia, and Japan, and Germany, the fourth, fifth, and sixth largest emitters on Earth. Also wanna mention a couple details because the figures weren't available. This does not count the extra emissions on top of milk that is required to create butter, ice cream, and yogurt. It also doesn't include things like bison and venison farming, farming deer for meat. And it's not really livestock, but this also doesn't include any emissions from fishing out in the ocean and other places, which would be, you know, notable. So how did the EPA get this so wrong? Well, they show some figures in their full report, which I'll link below. They have a bit of a black box situation going on still. It might have been due to undercounting methane emissions. They used a bit of an older model to estimate ruminant methane emissions. And it might have been because they were looking at a lower global warming potential for methane. We now know that it's higher than we used to think it was then. You know, global warming potential is how powerful of a greenhouse gas methane is. So they probably just underestimated that. Could have been other areas too. They could have underestimated feed emissions. They could have underestimated the total amount of animal products being produced. And if you are curious, at looking at the environmental working groups methodology. I will link that below as well. And then as far as how the FAO got their higher number, well, they used their global livestock environmental assessment model, which seems to be quite thorough. But what is worth it for the environment doesn't stop at CO2 emissions. It also includes CO2 sequestration or trapping that carbon. And this is another story and where a vegan model would open up some serious windows from the EPA. They say that we sequester about 11% or 700 million metric tons a year just from trees and land in the US as of now. But from the USDA, we use nearly 50% of our lower 48 land to graze or grow feed for livestock. And according to this study, a vegan diet uses one eighth the amount of land that our current diet uses. So we would free up a massive amount of land. In the simplest scenario, that land could then be used to just plant trees to sequester carbon. And from this report to Congress, quote, afforestation, simply planting trees, of crop or pasture land is estimated to have the potential to sequester between 2.2 and 9.5 metric tons of CO2 per acre per year. That's 5.85 metric tons per acre on average. So let's just use that and multiply that out by seven eighths of the 930 million acres of land that would be freed up. Simply put, that's the portion of land that would not be used in a vegan model. So the result in a vegan model, just by planting trees in all the extra land we would free up that we're not using for livestock, we could sequester approximately 90% of our carbon emissions. And making even modest efforts to lower emissions in other areas like transport and industry, we could easily become carbon negative, assuming that trees perform at the level that we're estimating. That's a big if, but still. So in the end, it is absolutely worth it to go on a vegan diet for the environment in the US. Looking at animal product emissions from that production perspective, it's clear that yes, our emissions fall right in line with the global emissions for livestock in terms of a percentage Percentage. The EPA simply can't be correct. I don't want to go ahead and blame industry here because obviously the fossil fuel industries would have manipulated their levels down. I think it was more of just not specializing in the area of measuring these emissions, but who knows? You know, it might've just been more a lack of thoroughness. They don't generally specialize in livestock systems and emissions unlike the FAO. But I know some carnivore YouTuber is probably gonna take the lowest of the low ball figures by the beef industry for emissions and be like, oh, I debunked your video. Nope, these are widely accepted beef emissions. Nice try though. And then finally, we have that major potential for sequestration as we shift more toward a vegan diet. And it's more than just carbon. We're also talking about lowering the amount of nitrates dumped into the ocean for dead zones. We're talking about other types of land use, species extinction, water use, and so on. These are all great environmental motivators to change your diet. All right, so I'm gonna have the spreadsheets linked below. I'm gonna have the Tableau public graphics linked below. They can be embedded on websites and so forth. So let me know right there down below what you think about all of this in the comments. Also, if I maybe missed anything or got something wrong mathematically, definitely let me know. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, whatever you wanna do, and see you in the next video.